Hello teacups, what's brewing? Clearly this is not our usual reaction space. <laughs> uh, don't worry, I've got React filmed. But basically what happened is I had a clip at the beginning. Unfortunately, I had turned it off to go and fix something and then came back. So I've just lost the beginning of this video. Um, just where I say hi and intro everything. But basically this is a react to uh, Chantel's health updates. And the file that I initially had introducing that hates everything. Don't know what's wrong with it, that it's corrupted, if it copied over weird, but I've deleted the original off my phone already, so I can't just go in and fix it. <laughs> so, very sorry about that. I didn't realize until later, from now when I'm going to edit it. So, welcome to the React, and let's get into it. Okay, and we're starting this video with uh, a body shot. Now, she did mention that her diabetes medication, which I still I'm still holding on to the idea that it w was prescribed for diabetes and um, for controlling her blood sugars primarily. However, it does have the side effect of weight loss. So we've got a full body shot here. Maybe she intends it as a before photo. We don't know, but it's a nice outfit. I like, I'm, I don't love the turtleneck on her, but I like the kind of tunic dress, boots, jean shirt combo. I think it's a cute look. Oh my goodness. That's a lot of snow. It was clear two seconds ago, and now I'm glad I'm in here. <laughs> no, I'd be too. <laughs> what is it? It's snow. It's beautiful to look at, it's though. It's snow. To be used. Oh, I don't like the voice. Hey, guys. Hey, hey, guys. Hey, how are you? How are you? Fine, thank you. I just washed my face. Okay, nice. And had a shower. And I'm back in some pajamas. <laughs> okay. So I just wanted to do Comfy. a quick update for you and talk a bit about how I'm doing on this new injection I'm on for diabetes and for weight loss and just in general how I'm feeling, how I'm doing. So to start, I know I've been doing a lot of live streams and yes, I she has. Know it's easy to do when I'm feeling more down in the dumps. It allows me to interact with people, which does brighten my day up a little bit to talk to you guys and everything and just see the overwhelming amount of support I have from you guys. I'll the thing with the lives, she has struck me more and more as this year has gone on, as many of us have been struggling with, I think, to an extent, is a little bit lonely. Her life, her social circle within her life, shall we say, was fairly limited even before COVID. And with COVID, naturally, everyone's has become more limited. And I think she gets lonely. So I understand her wanting to turn the lives on, particularly when her mods go so hardcore that usually the responses in the lives mostly are a pretty safe space for her. Because even if something gets said, it's going to be deleted pretty much immediately. So I can understand her doing the lives. It is also much easier for her. She doesn't have to edit anything. She just turns it on, says her piece and goes. So that works for her and it earns her money, it earns her super chat. She also gets the ads on the uh, live after it's done. So there's, there's a lot of benefit to her without putting in as much effort as an edited video needs her to put in. So I, I see it, I really do. Um, in terms of her not, how do I put this? I can believe she doesn't have the energy to edit a video. She does call back to her depression. I can believe she's depressed. I can believe that situationally she'd be in a very depressed place. In her live stream, she does seem very energetic. I mean, she was high as balls in a recent one, which might explain it. But she she's very energetic. She's interacting. Now, is the face she presents on camera necessarily everything she's feeling? No, of course it isn't. How could it be? But she does very long live streams, we see her for a while, and she maintains that energy of conversation, if not physically. So, being too depressed to be able to film a video, am I saying it's impossible? No, I'm not at all. But I think if you have the energy to do multiple hour live streams, you could probably pop a video out. So I'm going through some side effects of this new medicine I'm on and it 
doesn't have me feeling too well right now. So I'm on an injection called Ozempic and I'm on a um, 0.25 milligram dose to start and in two weeks I'll be moving up to 0.5 milligrams. Now this injection, once a week injection is used to lower your A1C and blood sugars and also to lose some weight and most people have reported that they've lost about 5% of their body weight by taking this injection. It said for a 200 pound person they lost 12 pounds over a year but that was on a one milligram dose not a half. She said she's going up to half. She might be heading for one maybe but um, the dosage I'm assuming would make a difference because the amount you've got in your system would affect the side effects which are what are making her lose weight. So she has discussed those side effects a little bit in previous lives that I have not been covering at the moment, but we'll let her go on because I imagine she's going to get into them. It, it does slow down your digestion. It also controls the hunger hormone in your brain. So I do find that it has been doing that. I do find that I'm overall just less thinking of food. That's I am positive. also turned off by a lot of foods it always feels like there's something in my stomach I always feel full and that's probably because of the slowed down digestion those all seem like positive things I will check because I might be misremembering this I was under the impression that I mean grenoline can be produced in many parts of the body so it's entirely possible it's also in the brain but I was under the impression that your stomach produced that that uh, substance because one of the things with having sleeve surgery is that the removal of the stretchy part of your stomach removes a lot of that. Could be wrong, the more I'm speaking the less sure I am so <laughs> could definitely be wrong. Um, I'm glad she's, I'm glad physically but also glad mentally that she feels like she's got a little bit more control over how hungry she feels. Sorry that's a lie in here um simply because mentally it can have a huge impact to feel out of control all the time and she frequently is physically she frequently is emotionally and that takes a toll so i'm i'm hoping this helps her she is struggling from the small amounts of the live streams i've seen she does seem to be struggling with mental versus physical hunger because her brain is telling her no you like take the pizza no, you like pizza, you should eat pizza, you want pizza, you always want pizza. And that message is still there when her stomach's like, ugh, stop giving me pizza, you guys. And um, that that is something that takes a fair amount of time. And she may never quite get that balance right. That is something that is a lifelong thing. So to expect her to have it in two weeks is unrealistic. Um, there is some nausea. Sounds a little and bit unpleasant. Recently, there's more fatigue, so I'm just really tired all the time. Lately, it doesn't matter how much sleep I get. Is she sure yeah, that's... the doctor did say to expect some pretty yeah. nasty side effects, but... Is she sure the tiredness is a side effect of that medication? Because that's the other thing. I'm... On one hand, I'm really glad that she has a doctor here who she can go and talk to about these things, but that's also balanced with the fact that when she was injecting herself on stream, which, whole nother thing, um, when she was injecting herself on stream, she didn't seem to know what she was doing. And she did say previously, I'm sure, because she was saying her mum gets mad at her about it, or her grandma gets mad at her maybe. Um, she was saying that she doesn't ask questions at the doctor, which to me just seems like a mental avoidance technique maybe to try and protect protect herself from certain knowledge I'm guessing like the less she engages with it the less she has to engage with it mentally um but she needs to ask those questions simply because she has so many other conditions and tiredness could be related to the medicine could be completely unrelated um she has had bloods done so I'd hope they'd find like an iron deficiency or another cause but uh, when she has side effects like that, really she needs to keep a tally of them and keep in constant contact with her medical professionals just to make sure it's not something else because she's juggling so many conditions at the moment. But from what I hear, they do taper down 
in the that would be nice because it sounds unpleasant weeks to months or whatever so but i'm guessing that's how the weight loss part works is you just don't feel like eating you feel sick so you don't Fair. feel like eating <laughs> so it's kind of a trade-off you know but so on top of all that you know that i've been struggling a lot with my mental health overall motivation to do anything you know which is a sign of depression for sure and i'm really working that's actually one of the dangers of taking an antidepressant uh if you've ever taken an antidepressant you may notice that i think on all antidepressants there is a warning saying could carry an increased risk of suicide and that's frequently misinterpreted as it causing that impulse and what generally antidepressants do uh they can make you feel more capable of doing things which seems like it it's speaking to Chantel's feeling at the moment uh, but unfortunately there's this no man no man's land in the middle of uh sort of feeling very depressed and then being treated and kind of coming out of it where you feel more capable of doing things but in the wrong frame of mind one of the things you may feel more capable of is actually committing suicide instead of just thinking about it and so that's why you've really got to be careful with some of those thoughts and reach out for help immediately uh if my doctor said to me like even if the thought is well i would never do that call us we can change your medication you know we can help you please just reach out whatever happens so anyway the little side story to just to say that is a symptom of depression i can believe she's depressed and i've said this before but i think a lot of her depression is situational and it, the more work she does to change her situation the more in control of it she'll feel the less overwhelmed by it she'll feel so i i'd love to see her make that progress i've always said that I'm hard on that but i know there will come a time where i'm feeling a bit better and as soon as i do i will put out some recorded videos for you guys love and, it i would love it you know Please. probably within days or whatever so i do want to get back on a schedule and i have been changing my name back and forth on my channel my <laughs> banners she As was if, Chantal you know, Marie. She, her banner is still Chantal Marie, but she's changed her name back to Foodie Beauty in the actual icon now. And that changing my banner and my name will like just change everything. Yeah. But I'm in, like in an identity crisis right now, and I really don't know what the heck I'm doing. So <laughs> bear with me. I know it's amusing to a lot of you, and I know it's. <laughs> I'm laughing, so I can't say it's not amusing, but in a general sense, the back and forth she does seems exhausting and is quite sad. So the bigger picture behind this one amusing thing, I don't think is very funny, but this name banner thing particularly, I do, I do giggle when she does it, because you're just counting the seconds until she changes it back, really. But she's aware of it, we're aware of it, eh. Laughable? um yeah i know so anyway yeah i guess that's really all i wanted to say i don't really have much else to say i know a lot you of clearly have something we're four minutes in at my live streams and like i said they're just it's not going to be a permanent thing i know i've been doing so many of them but it's just an easy way to just press you know turn on the camera and hang out with a thousand people yep. <laughs> or so and just share my day because i really do like having i really do like sharing um a lot of stuff so it's never been my sometimes impression i think of you. i don't yeah but in the end sometimes. i really do enjoy it i think she likes having a social circle I, I really do and that's absolutely fair i mean in the time of covid take it wherever you can get it so you know <laughs> she frequently overshares in lives and then regrets it and to the extent of this video i think she'll regret this video even though it's fairly benign as far as her videos go uh just because it'll go back to oh i shouldn't have shared anything it's been a constant regret of hers that she shared so much about her health because now she can't get away from it i'm kind of an attention whore so i appreciate the attention you guys are giving me I think it's I just that. also like the and you're winter welcome. 
gloom. It's just, I feel cabin fever, but then I get anxiety when I go out a lot more now. So I'm going to have to really push myself um, when the weather is nice enough to go out, which is going to be just mm. around the corner. So I'd like for Pete's and I both to get out and do more things for videos and stuff. We used to have a lot of fun going places and um, I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, she used to go to that airfield or, or was it a park that was next to an air museum or something like that. And, you know, even though it was obviously a struggle for her, I like to see her outside. I, I like to see her with a, a change of environment and just trying to do something. That was nice. And I'd like to see more of that. Um, she has been talking a lot about wanting to travel. And I think if anything, over the last year or so, if, if it's done anything, I think a lot of people are now just get me on a plane. I want to go somewhere. <laughs> So I understand it. But she did say something the other day where she was like, I haven't flown since it was early 2000s, 2003, 2004, somewhere in that, that range. And I was like, so this, this question of, okay, once I do this, I'm going to travel. Once I do that, I'm going to travel. It becomes a never ending put off. Like she was going to go to the Dominican Republic. Now she claims that was COVID. We won't get back into that argument, but it's been so long since she traveled. Yes, it's been COVID the last, let's say two years even. Like, uh, I know we've just hit the one year anniversary, but let's give it some leeway. Let's say two years, no travel. Okay. What's been going on for the other years? Because that's a long old time. That is a long old time. And uh, I know that money may also be an issue. It's not cheap to travel, but she seemed to earlier in her channel at least, be pretty decently set up with finances. She talked about the settlement she got from her work. She could have afforded to travel. So now that just makes me think, okay, now it's COVID. What will it be next? How long has she been wanting to go to Jamaica to see her aunt? Like there's a lot. As I said, all these daily live streams are just temporary. I mean, I do still plan we'll on see. doing regular live streams, but probably not every single just not every single day. She's currently <laughs> live. Once I get back to recording videos. Diet-wise, how I'm doing with eating, I'll probably talk less about it uh, on my channel. We'll see. In regards to weight loss and stuff like that. Only because I feel a lot of the time when I bring that subject up again, I, f I figured out that what what bothers me about it is I'm always justifying my choices. <laughs> I find myself always justifying my choices. I always find myself justifying what I'm eating. And that kind of just... For certain things that she eats, there is no justification. But yes, I agree. She does buy into that conversation a lot. Buy into is the wrong phrase there. What am I trying to say? Give into, maybe? Um, but she gets into that conversation a lot, shall we say, and she can't resist it, resist telling us why, no, this is fine. But because it's not fine, because she doesn't just say, I'm eating this, yeah. Nope, completely aware of the situation, I'm eating it anyway. And just draw a line under that, because it is her channel, it is her body, and she can eat whatever she wants in whatever quantity she wants. But every time she tries to justify something that's clearly not good for her, it just adds fuel to the fire. And I can bet she's sick of it, but she can also take a step away from that without completely banning the subject. Or at least she should be able to. However, she frequently struggles to do so. It's maybe a, a more precise way of saying that. It can be toxic. And I'm trying to, you know, work with a therapist to get away from that. You said you weren't working food. with a therapist. So the problem is everybody has a different opinion on what is healthy. Yes, they on do. On what someone should eat to lose weight. I almost feel like I get told off, I guess, in a sense, by a lot of people. Um, like, what are you doing? No, don't eat that. That has too many carbs. Or it's just like I, I just envision the tone. And I guess with writing a comment, the tone doesn't really come through as well as, you know, some, maybe sometimes people don't mean to sound that way. 
but I think she's being very very careful in her language here in a way that we don't frequently see from her to not insult her her loyal viewers <laughs> in this saying oh maybe you don't mean it I'm gonna be completely fair to her here I think a lot of people mean it and I think a lot of people are mean about it yeah I get that she don't want to hear it and she hears it a lot I get that I get that there are a lot of opinions over what's the right way to eat versus you know uh, what she's doing I also get that when she's devouring a pizza and a, a side of poutine that people are gonna talk because it doesn't really matter what way you think eating is healthy have I said that sentence right hmm it doesn't really matter what way of eating you think is healthy that was right <laughs> uh, pizza and Putin is probably not going to factor into it so there are some things that universally probably not a good idea and that's what tends to generate those comments I appreciate in this moment her being careful not to just insult all her viewers that would be great but I do also recognize that actually sometimes the tone is exactly what she imagines and sometimes the language is very, very clear. So yeah, I, I think she gets a lot of hate for that. I understand her reaction, but also her actions frequently make her a target for that. So if you don't draw the target on your own back, people will stop trying to shoot it. There are two sides to that, I think. I just, uh, I'm just going to stop justifying what I'm eating or what I'm doing. I know I you put a post up a while ago about making drastic changes. And you know what? That's yeah. part of my disorder is just going from black and white extremes. And that's also, again, in therapy, what I'm going to be working to get away from in order to have a repaired relationship with food because no matter what diet you go on if you don't repair your relationship with food it's gonna make relapses a lot more likely um, just from experience just from what I'm learning so I just want to say that sometimes yes you see me eat Chinese food you see me eat pizza yeah and I'm poutine and pizza again I'm not I'm making pizza excuses again. for what I'm eating it's just that I'm having a really hard time with extremes and completely eliminating things immediately from my diet and I'm very impulsive, so a lot of the time I announce things, and that has always been to my detriment. <laughs> so, I don't know, hopefully I learn one day that not to be so impulsive, but... I don't think she'll ever learn that. I don't think that's her personality. Um, even if she does go to therapy and she does find better mechanisms of coping, I think that's just part of her personality and she is the way she gets overly excited about a new idea she announces it too soon it is what it is yeah we are where we are the issue of what's good for her mental health versus good for her physical health is an extremely difficult one extremely difficult because as i said she's got so many health issues it's so hard to balance all her needs i would say that her physical health seems more urgent at the moment and so I'd look at a way of eating that would benefit that quickly perhaps in the short term while making other changes long term I can 100% understand that she it finds it she really struggles to eliminate all the things that she shouldn't be eating I do think that struggle is basically she doesn't want to as well well not basically basically is the wrong word it's a very difficult thing I think she doesn't want to and so she won't let go of that as an idea because moderation but I don't think and I've never thought that she's able to moderate and I've said this before about her she's never shown evidence of that and in her moments where she is more clear-headed she is as, has said as much so giving it up is ultimately where she needs to get to but she's not ready for that right now and if the azempic can just help her lower the quantity of these things she's eating let's call that a start but so long as she's eating all these things i think they will trigger binges but at the moment the azempic seems a positive influence even if it's in kind of a 
a way that doesn't make her feel that good. So hopefully it'll do her some good. But again, you know, it's something I have to work on. It's something I have to learn to improve. We all have room for improvement. We, we all have flaws. Do. And for me, um, being impulsive is definitely one of those things. So, um, but you've said that for how I many years? I think that I need more psychiatric help than what I have. I, I am on an antidepressant, which I've been on for a while, and it does help take the edge off. But I'm wondering if I have something else going on. I've never been properly psychiatrically evaluated. That was an odd statement to me. One, because I have a memory, and maybe it's a false memory, of her going to see a team to be evaluated and then it not going anywhere because she didn't follow through with it. But I feel like she's been evaluated a few times on this channel. And uh, maybe just my idea of what an evaluation is is different. Maybe she just went to introductions. Maybe it's a false memory altogether. But if she's on antidepressants, how has she managed that without being evaluated first? Because to get the antidepressant, you have to have a doctor say, yeah, you're depressed. And to, to figure that out, they'd have to analyze you, you know? <laughs> so I'm, I'm not sure how that all kind of correlates and fits together but it might work a little bit differently. It might be that her GP said, okay, we'll put you on some antidepressants for now because it, it sounds like you need some support. And then we'll look into other avenues of support for you, like therapy, which she didn't follow through with. So that could be where she's going. Also, antidepressants sometimes have to be changed. If she's been on one for a while, it might just be, it's time for a change in medication. And uh, that's something, again, she should explore because it doesn't seem, if things are as bad as she's making them sound right now, it doesn't seem like the one she's had is maybe, the one she's on is maybe as effective as it could be. And it's really, really hard to get in to see a psychiatrist here right now. Um, there's just wait lists, there's shortages, and whenever I bring it up to my doctor, it's... it's one of those things where it's like, ooh, you know, it's going to be hard to get you in with somebody. Okay, so and this do is the really, hard thing. Um, Wait for it. It's just a reality of uh, mental illness health uh, care. It's 100% a reality of mental illness health care in general, especially in a tax paid system where there are limited resources that have to go around. But on channel, we've seen her have multiple opportunities at this. So clearly there's something available. It you know, I'm in Canada and that's just how it is here. And I'm sure it's like that in a lot of other places. Yep. I understand that everyone has a different opinion, like I said, on what should be eaten and what should be done. And you should see, be yep. an inpatient. You Talk should to see your this. Doctor. And, Talk to your doctor. Um, I used to just kind of fight that and be defensive and, used to. and you know, continually justify my, my answers to you. Used and I'm just going to gonna stop doing that. You, you can have your opinion. This Please is... Do. Um, interactive. It's a I would social love media. That. Please do. Um, I ask that you be respectful uh, in comments. I don't, you know, condone the the bullying or the hate, but you're allowed your opinion. If that, I agree with that. Genuinely, I I think she gets a lot of shit in her comments, and I don't condone the bullying or the hate either. As much as people seem to think I hate her, I don't. I assure you, I don't. However, while I completely recognize she gets a lot of shit in her comments, if you would like people to be respectful, as I feel they should be in their opinion, I don't believe it's an unrealistic expectation for the audience to also have of Chantel. I think it's a two-way street. I think there are faults on both sides of that particular equation. And generally you tend to build, you tend to build your audience. And part of building that is the attitude that you put out in, in your content. So do I 100% think if people are gonna give opinions, try and be respectful about it? Yes, I 100% believe that. But I also think that she has to consider how she presents her opinion a lot of the time because could we also say that she does the same? I would say not. You know, but that doesn't mean that um, 
if you leave your opinion to someone, doesn't mean that they're going to follow that. It right. might not be she doesn't right have for their to. way of living or whatever. So <clears throat> I think that people have this perception that because of the back and forth and uh, because of not following through on certain things and, you know, announcing I want to be super healthy and then eating something that would not be considered uh, healthy, um, yeah. that people... I thought she was about to say not be considered super healthy and I was like, super! She didn't go there, she stopped herself, she realised we could... Just see me as somebody who's not wanting to change, who's not doing things to change behind the scenes and... Um, we're seeing hours and hours and hours of footage from her. We're seeing a lot of lives. And the upshot of that is the things that are usually behind the scenes, we're seeing a lot of. But even if what we see on camera is the only thing she's consuming, to say, okay, well, you, you know, you make the assumption because clearly it's a problem within her audience. No, we, we form a conclusion based on the evidence we're presented with. So you think we're not trying to change behind the scenes. I'm talking about what's on the scene, what's in the scene, what's happening on camera. And you give no evidence that behind the scenes you're doing anything but exactly what we see on camera. And that's where that opinion comes from. That's fair enough. Um, but that's not true at all. It's not true in at all. In what way? I do have a therapist. I don't talk to them every day. Okay. This, this bothered me. Because when I say recently, I mean within the last, definitely within the last week, but within the last few days, maybe. I can't remember which live it was because I've watched bits and pieces of different ones. She said she hadn't spoken to her therapist in a while, that she'd only gone to one or two appointments. Oh, uh, maybe I'm paraphrasing or misphrasing or something, but that's the impression I got that she did have a therapist that she hadn't taken advantage of that therapist. So to me, this whole conversation, this whole video she's putting out, reads like the result of a conversation she's had with a therapist. I think that's what's pushed her into this mindset and into this video content. She has a way of changing something for a day or two days and then being like, I do this. I, like when she was vegan, oh well, I don't eat junk food because she hadn't eaten it for two days. And the actual reality is I have no intention of eating junk food is where that is because she hasn't been doing it for a while, for uh, long enough to be able to say, well, I don't do that. What she means is I won't do it anymore. When she says I talk to my therapist, maybe she has. I, I, this reads like maybe she has that speculation, but that doesn't mean she's been doing it on the kind of regular basis that people are asking her to for her own mental health. It does mean that perhaps she's intending to, which would be wonderful, that's a positive change. But the way she's framing this makes her seem a lot more active with it than other evidence would seem to suggest. Um, maybe once every two weeks or something like that. It depends. It's not really a fixed schedule anymore because I did cancel before my, my yeah, you did. therapy. Therapy, again, is just something that's so hard for me to to get into. I feel opened up. I feel naked. I feel that's what therapy vulnerable. Does. I don't feel very good talking about yeah. things. Therapy is super uncomfortable, but that's that's how it works. And I completely get her not being comfortable, particularly when she's not going frequently enough to even the two weekly appointments um, to, to build the kind of rapport with a, a therapist where you would feel comfortable and safe being more vulnerable with them. She's still very much in the beginnings of her relationship with her therapist, but because of that, she pulls away. And so you never see that kind of progress. With people, um, somebody asked me if I ever cry and I don't, I don't like crying. I actually hate crying. No, if I hate anyone that. loves crying. So I guess I just feel sorry for myself whenever I talk about issues. Um, and I, I just hate that reasons feeling. to be so, with a therapist. But I'm going to work through it. And Good. especially for the eating disorder recovery part, 
A lot of the process for eating disorder recovery is actually seems counterintuitive or counterproductive to a lot of people. Because it is because a lot of the time. <laughs> with when you have an eating disorder, the main thing is that your relationship with food is just all kinds of messed up. And in order to repair that, you have to stop giving moral value to foods. To get ahead, you kind of have to go backwards a bit, <laughs> you know. Um, by no saying way. I'm going to allow myself all kinds of food, uh, and uh, no food is good or bad. So you might you might eat, all you know. Oh wow, I can eat all this. So you might eat more of it at first, but then the idea is that without that that pressure to eliminate the food from your diet, your your mind is not going to panic and restrict and think, okay, I'm, I'm I can't have this, so I must eat it all. I do. I'm not a therapist. Yeah, I'm not a therapist. I'm not involved in the healthcare and the psychological side of this. Um, I understand the logic of that approach is uh, kind of what I want to say. Sorry, I'm losing the light. So um, I'm going to have to hurry up a bit more. Um, I understand the logic of that approach. I really do. Uh, I would say that she tends to find loopholes within that approach where she says, essentially, kind of as a mental thought, her process seems to be, okay, I shouldn't say that any food is, is bad because food isn't a moral decision. It's not good or bad. It doesn't make you a good or bad person. It can be positive or negative for the impact it has on your health, but it doesn't make you a good or bad person for eating it. But she then takes, okay, I can eat this food. It's it's fine, it's available, I can make that choice too, I should eat this food, because if it's not bad, it's good, it's good to have this balance. While never actually instigating, instigating that balance, I'm struggling with words today, you guys. So establishing that balance. And um, it just gives her license, because in her head it's permission to eat everything. And that may well be part of the process, but the amount of damage she's doing while she's in a very precarious physical situation at the moment really concerns me. And I think any doctor worth their salt would be, as part of her team, be in contact with her physical doctor and be trying to find a balance that they can implement with her because clearly something's gonna give. And I think her body will go before her mind, so we need to be mindful of it. So there's there's different steps that are taken and it's a longer process. So it is a long I just process. wanted to let you guys know, yes, I am working th uh, on things. And like I said, the, the road to victory is paved with all kinds of failure so Always. maybe we Always just is. need to stop looking at failure as such a negative thing and just kind of normalize it a little bit um what's important is if you keep trying right so uh, what's important is you're currently facing some very serious health issues and that's the thing with it being drastic the word drastic is being applied because you're in a severe situation so yes keep trying but at some point like i said something's going to give so it's becoming a more urgent issue um anyways i think that's it for now i uh don't really have much else to say again <laughs> so um i hope to i do i know you guys have been I've been promising time warps for like three months. I don't think I even I care anymore. And I love her time coming warps. Out with those. I don't um, believe you, but I I don't even care. At least one of them next week. I will see. I'm feeling I mean, a bit better day by. I don't even like um, Twin Peaks, so whatever. But if you break promises and break promises and break promises, when the time actually comes, people don't care anymore. By day, I'm up in the daytime. I'm feeling a lot better. I'm hoping once my injection starts going through my system more and the side effects subside a bit, I won't be as tired. That'd be nice. And time warp is one of those things I really to. enjoy doing, but I want to have the energy to do it. I don't want to feel like crap when I'm doing those things. I want to have fun, you know. That's fair. So, um, otherwise it just won't be enjo as enjoyable for me. And 
it won't be as enjoyable for you. Sorry, I have like, I have this tinny sulfuric taste in my mouth. Mm. Um, this sounds very unpleasant as an injection, which has been reported by people. So it's it's not it's not good. <laughs> and thank you for watching. Bye guys. You're welcome. Bye bye. Okay, so very much beginning of the cycle, Shanta. But as ever, as much as we all get sick of this, and man, have I gotten sick of it recently. I'm always here for her to get healthier. Always. I want her to do it. The Azempic seems like it's helping, perhaps in a kind of backhanded way, but it's helping nonetheless. So let's see how far that goes. I'm happy she's taking steps to try and address the mental issues with food, but I worry about it slowing down or otherwise halting her progress on, phys on the physical side of things. And I realize I'm using the word progress quite optimistically here, but you know, you, you have to start somewhere. One would think this is yet another start day from her. I'm not going to label it good, bad or otherwise until we've seen a few more days of her. I also haven't seen the live stream. She started what seems like immediately after this. So I'll go check that out. Shall I <laughs> Let's see how we're doing? Paul, oh, this video got a lot longer than I thought. I'm going to try and edit it down and I will see you at some point. Bye bye.